ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, founder, CEO, and chief coder of New Relic, Lou Cerny. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Wow, I, I'm just going to soak this in for a second. I, uh, it's hard to believe. Um, hard to believe this is our first conference, and um, it's already off to an amazing start. Over a thousand of you um, have decided to spend a couple days here to focus on building modern software that changes the world. And, and I can't tell you how, how excited the whole team at New Relic is um, to be to be having this conference and bringing you all together to, to focus on that. Um, that. My name is Lou Cerny, and I'm the founder and CEO at New Relic. And we're going to have just an amazing set of speakers that uh, you're, are just going to blow your socks off for, for the next couple of days. They, they come from a, a broad variety of backgrounds. They're experts in big data, in uh, application performance, in server technologies. And we've also got a great, uh, greatly diverse lineup in terms of facial hair and hair on your head. And, <laughs> you know, we believe in diversity at New Relic. Um, and we've also got an awesome band. I don't know how many of you are fans of Cake. I just love that band. <clears throat> so it's going to be a great couple of days. Uh, could I get the speaker notes on the front uh, so I'm not looking behind me when I present? Thank you very much. Great. Nope. No. <clears throat> okay, let's go back. We're waiting for our slides. While we're waiting for our slides, I've got two very special people in the audience tonight. Um, the most embarrassing thing in my life could I imaginable is when your parents are here watching you do your work stuff. But can we have my mom and dad stand up. Stand up, Mom. She's only this tall. They, uh, they bought me my com first computer in 1982, and uh, <clears throat> that changed my life. I, I'm sure many of you in this room have a similar kind of uh, experience. All right, I'm just going to wing it and go through my slides. We think that software is changing the world, or as Mark Andreessen says, um, <clears throat> software is eating the world. And you are all part of a movement. And, and that's a special movement, because if, if you think about it, um, I can't think of a more exciting to profession to be involved in than software. Um, it's just what I love to do every day. And, what, and, and, and you know, if software is eating the world and you get a chance to write software for your job, that's just a remarkable opportunity, right? I can't believe we get paid. I get paid to write code, because um, it's what I do and what I do do for fun. <laughs> Um, regardless of, of whether, whether, um, whether there's a paycheck involved with it. But with all that joy of creating software comes an obligation. Because everybody knows the difference between writing software that's frustrating, difficult, slow, poor user experience, software that just sucks, is so different from software that delights people, software that can change the world, software that can change the way people get get access to a black car in, in seconds, like Uber does, or Airbnb transforming the way people can find a place to stay when they travel. Um, <clears throat> and so if you're a software professional, you really have an opportunity to make a difference. And, and, and I think everybody, no matter who you are, you want to make a difference. You want to make a little dent in the universe, to, to borrow from the great Steve Jobs. And the size of that dent may vary by, you know, not everyone's going to create Apple computer, but everybody in this room can ha play a part in creating software that really impacts the world. And that's really what Future Stack is all about and why we're here. So this is about much more than New Relic. This is about crafting software, modern software, that makes a difference. And we're just thrilled that you could spend a couple of days with us on that topic. But as uh, CEO of New Relic, I, I, I certainly it, I ought to take the opportunity to, to tell you about where we are as a company and I'm very excited to be sharing a bunch of new news with you all today that I think uh, you're, you're going to be excited about too, that will help you in this mission to craft software that makes a difference. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take you on a brief whirlwind history of the past in New Relic that brings us up today. <clears throat> then I'm going to get to today, and, and we're going to be launching so many product uh, initiatives and innovations today. 
I only have time to take you through five of them, but there's actually at least 11 that I've heard of, big new things we're shipping for all of you today. Um, so, so I'm excited to show, to demo real code. There's nothing I like doing more uh, after building it. So, and uh, then I'm going to take you in the future, and that's, that's, um, I'm particularly excited about what we're, what we're working on that we're going to introduce next year. Um, so it's going to be, um, we're going to cover a lot, and uh, we'll get through it um, by starting off with, with where it all began. Um, this is me in the summer of 2007 unboxing my first iPhone 1. And uh, I was, I don't know how many of you kind of remember when you first got your, like, your touch smartphone and the impact it had for you. For me, I was blown away by it, just how transformational something this elegant could be on my life and the lives of millions of people, <clears throat> billions of people. And what, one of the things I was inspired by as someone with a background in enterprise software I was amazed that when you un this was a phone that the manufacturer spent so much time thinking about getting going, getting started with this phone. It was the very first phone you could activate on your own in your home without the help of somebody in the AT&T store, the Sprint store. Remember in the old days, people had to like press all those buttons just to turn on your phone so you could use it? Well, multiply that by 10,000, and that's the experience of getting started with most enterprise software. Right? Except for instead of somebody behind the desk at a sprint store, it's someone that charges you $400 an hour in a nine week engagement to get things going. So I thought there's an opportunity to create software that, where you put enough investment and thought into how you get going with it so that um, our customers could become, our prospects could become, could become customers on their own and, uh, and the software would speak for itself. And with that in mind, I was on my year off and I had an opportunity to spend a little time in Rome and, and uh, um, really, this is where the genesis of New Relic began. Uh, began. Uh, during that time off, uh, I guess my subconscious was thinking about what I'd do next, and here I am with a glass of wine and my ever-present laptop. And uh, this, uh, this is not a bad place to be, to be thinking about what you're going to do next. Um, and what I was doing was I was teaching myself uh, this new thing to me called Ruby on Rails, learning the Ruby programming language and, and learning the Rails framework. And uh, the Teach Myself Rails app that I built is now New Relic. It's now the APM product that uh, most of you use every day to keep your software running and delighting your customers. So uh, that's where it all started, and uh, um, it's, it's come an awful long way since, since those uh, early days. And, and one thing that is core to our company that I, I, I believe will always be the case with New Relic is we're never going to stop innovating. We, initiated, we launched our first product in, a year later, in the summer of 2008, uh, the first product to do uh, SaaS monitoring for Ruby on Rails uh, applications. And uh, <coughs> we found that a lot of what we did really well wasn't specific to Ruby and Rails. In fact, it, with the hard part was collecting a massive amount of data from the innards of software at a very deep level, and then presenting it in a way that actually could make sense to our users so that they could make their software better in production, to so delight their customers. And so we decided, let's take this, all of this uh, expertise and bring it to new platforms. So we introduced Java in 2009. Then we added two languages in, in 2010, PHP and .NET. Python in 2011. But, and then in 11, we decided, let's go beyond the application. Let's go all the way up to the end user. We added real user monitoring in 2011, and now we uh, measure, well, we'll show you some big numbers on how pervasive our real user monitoring technology is. Uh, we added server monitoring in 2012, so now you don't have to go to a different tool to see if your servers are having problems. Um, and by the way, we gave that away for free. Um, we believe in delivering more value for the same dollar that we charge uh, to our customers on an ongoing basis. So you expect us to, to do more stuff with your existing subscription. And finally, going on to 13, we've had a banner year already. I think most companies would declare a year a big victory as a product company if you introduced a brand new product for mobile, which is dramatically impacting how the quality of mobile applications and how they perform in production. And we launched a brand new platform that is taking off like wildfire that extends the visibility of New Relic to monitor everything around the application. We have over 70 plugins built by you, by our community, to extend New Relic to monitor databases and web servers and load balancers and network devices, et cetera. And by the way, we don't charge for any of that either. So if you want New Relic to monitor Mongo for you, just fire it up, the platform's free. And it's going to get better every day because uh, go on into our hacker lounge and start building plugins today. So it's been a great year so far, but we are far from done. 
In fact, that takes us up to present day to the things we will be announcing today. Uh, before I get to that, actually, this is a really cool visualization of our code base. So each of these little hubs are little projects that are spread out over the, over the history of our, of our company. And, and you can see that uh, as we've grown, we've built more and more uh, software for you. And it, it's, you know, as a data geek, I just love looking at visualizations like this. Um, so anyway, um, you can expect something like that to be far more sophisticated and far larger next year and on an ongoing basis as we build more stuff for you. So that does bring us now to the present, where um, we've got some very exciting things going on um, for, um, that, that we're excited to share with you today. But, but before I get to the actual product announcements, I do uh, want to thank you um, for making us the unquestioned leader in, in application performance management. There's no question about it, and we're, we're delighted to have that. <clears throat> As an aside, um, I, I founded a company in 1998 called Wiley Technology, and uh, at that point in time, there was no such category called application performance management, and every time I visited somebody with this idea that I could put visibility into production software, they're like, why on earth would we need that? And what, you know, how, I've got something that tells me how much CPU is on my server. That's all I need. I remember talking to one consultant at a large big five consulting firm and says, we don't need this because we don't ever have bugs go to production. We catch them all in QA. <laughs> Good thing I didn't hang up the hat and give up on this thing. So this, this market didn't exist when we started Wiley in 98. Um, so it's gratifying to me to now, uh, with my second company, have such a dominant position in this market, making it available to everyone. Everyone who has software ought to have APM if you care about it working well in production. And that's why we're collecting over 200 billion metrics from your software every day. Doing that's not easy. Doing it at scale is not easy, but we managed to do it very well. We're monitoring 15 billion page views a, me a week across our customer base. Every time somebody loads a page, um, there's a good chance New Relic is there to ensure that it's delivering a, a great page response time. In fact, we are so dominant in market share for our real user monitoring technology uh, Lead Ledger, which measures you know, which JavaScript and, uh, you know, is present in various websites, says we are in 1. Uh, 1.2 million domains. Um, and, and that is just an absolutely staggering number. We're also in over 100 million devices. Over 100 million mobile devices are monitored by our technology that puts an agent inside your mobile app and tells you the performance of how that app's performing in the device. We only launched that product in March. Going from zero to 100 million devices in about half a year is pretty impressive. Um, and I believe that number is going to go up dramatically after what we have to show you very shortly. Um, the 1.2 million domains I've talked to you about, <coughs> according to Lead Ledger, we have a 45% share of that. We are double the number two player um, in application performance management for real user monitoring. Again. Um, we just, once we decide to, to build a technology to, to ex extend what we do, we do with the mind that everybody, no matter if you're small or big business, you have a need and a right to use software that helps you deliver a great customer experience. So 1.2 million domains monitored by New Relic. It's incredible. I mentioned our platform, 7,000 plugins installed across our customer base. This is the beauty of being a pure play, 100% committed to SaaS company. The day we launched our platform, every one of our customers had access to that platform. The day, the instant anybody push, pushes uh, the publish button on the new plugin that they're writing on our plugin platform, it's available to all of you, all of our customers. And how many customers is that? We're now up to 70,000 accounts using New Relic to make their software. <laughs> You know, I've heard it said a few times by our company, it's like we're democratizing this category of software. And what do I mean by that? Well, by comparison, my last company um, was the clear leader in APM when it was acquired in 2006. They had under 500 customers as the market leader in 2006. And some of you have seen me speak about New Relic, have heard me use the analogy of the satellite phone versus the cell phone. 
Satellite phones were available in the 90s. They were big, clunky, ugly, and very expensive, right? And what, what, what transformed the world was dramatically reducing the price of this device and making it far more elegant, usable, and just better product. And what happened is everybody in the world gets access to it, and despite the dramatically lower price, great companies are formed out of that, whereas companies in the satellite phone business find themselves irrelevant pretty quickly. We've done that to the market we serve today. And the accounts that we serve, again, what, what gives me particular joy about it is it's companies of all types. And these are companies that are changing the world through software. I'll give you a couple examples of, of companies that are pretty doing some very cool things, and New Relic plays a part in making it work well for your customers. Uh, Nike. Nike now has a fully customizable shoe building service. So you can specify the exact color of your shoelaces and what color the swoosh is and exactly where, you know, what, what the, what the, all, the, all the details of your shoes. So if your kid has a soccer team and you want them to have your shoes and the color of your team, you can do that on this website. Incredibly customizable and it's totally changing how their brand is personalized for each customer. That's pretty awesome. Zumba has changed the way the world pe people think about fitness. They're integrating technology with their, with, their, um, with, 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 their, with their fitness gyms so that people can better track how they're doing with meeting their, their personal goals. And, and uh, Lord knows, I, I, I could use a little bit of time at Zoom by myself, so um, I, 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 I'll be adding load to that service and, and New Relic will, will guarantee that it's still uh, scaling and, and performing well. But my favorite story that I will share with you about a customer today is cure.org. Cure uh, has a special mission. This is a nonprofit that has performed 138,000 life changing surgeries for children in developing countries. These are surgeries for, uh, for children with treatable conditions, but due to where they live and, and, and the economic situation they grew up in, that treatment's not been available to them. So, for example, a $1,000 gift to um, to cure can enable a child to walk for the rest of their life. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. And what they're doing with technology, they're connecting the donors to the people that they're helping. So that if you make a gift to cure, you can see through your cell phone straight to the child you're helping. Amazing stuff. It's changing how, how people think about philanthropy. And New Relic is very proud to be helping them ensure that that works well in production. But behind all these logos and these great companies are people or more specifically, data nerds. How many data nerds in the audience? <laughs> I love the data nerd t-shirts. Um, and uh, and I, I got to credit uh, our marketing team for being, without question, the best marketing team in, in high growth technology software. They're just amazing. <laughs> so, I often get asked the question, why do you give away so many t-shirts? Are, uh, are, are you a nonprofit too? Uh, do you want to change the world through t-shirts? Uh, there's a simple reason for it. We're a product first company. What do I mean by that? I mean that our strategy to become, and our goal is to be a top 10 enterprise software company that lasts for decades and has a global impact long beyond, you know, ideally my lifetime. And there are many ways in which great companies um, achieve their full potential. Um, they could achieve their full potential by being sales-driven, marketing-driven. Uh, they could you know, do, do it by, um, you know, having the, you know, Coca-Cola is an incredible marketing powerhouse, as an example. Um, but we are going to bet our success on delivering amazing software that continues to blow our customers forever. And so we're never going to rest in the laurels of the great stuff we've done in the past. We're going to continue to build amazing software that earns, earns a subscription of our customers on a month-to-month -month basis. And so given that we're a product-first company, we know that our customers, developers primarily, and, and IT operations people, you're all a very busy bunch of people. You've got a lot of demands on your time. And so the hardest part to get somebody to engage with New Relic is to spend the five minutes to try us out. And so we're willing to give an incentive. We're actually willing to buy a high-quality U.S.-made T-shirt that was made, you know, without any kind of social impact that you wouldn't want to hear about. 
like high quality US made, great quality t-shirt, um, because we want you to try our software. And if you try our software and you're a software professional and you have, a, you, you have an interest in your software delighting your customers, we believe you'll become a New Relic customer. And so this is a little nudge that gets you over the edge. 75,000 t-shirts sold and a remarkable uh, set of business results that come out of it. But since we're a product first company, let's get to product. I am so excited to be showing you and talking about the things we're shipping for you today. Uh, I think there's just going to be a bunch of stuff. If you use New Relic, um, you're going you're gonna to be excited to log in you know, as soon as this is done, after Hillary's keynote, of course, um, and after me. But, but when you get to New Relic, you're going to see some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> so let me, let me start off with the first thing. New Relic can never cover too many languages. If there's one thing I'm certain of is that so long as there's software, there are going to be great software languages, and there are different tools needed for different solutions. And so I am delighted to announce today the general availability of New Relic for Node. It's like my mom is so excited about New Relic for Node that you've never written JavaScript in your life, mom. <laughs> but she should be. We have over 10,000 people who have expressed interest in our Node product. 10,000 people expressed interest in our Node product. It's this, this is no small fad. This is a big trend. And when I visit small and large customers, they've been asking for Node for some time. We're delighted, delighted to deliver it. I am confident that we will have the number one dominant market share position for APM for Node within 60 days. We already have 700 people that have used the product today. The feedback is great. And just fire it up, install today, and you're going to be seen inside your Node apps just like you do with everything else we cover. Next, we've, mailed, we've come an awful long way with averages, measuring average response time of your database calls, your apps, your, your applications, your services, your, your web transactions. It's a great place to start, but you've been asking us for more, and so we're going to give you more. Every New Relic customer, as of today, will have percentiles and histograms in the product to dive deep. The more advanced folks uh, that on, on the statistics side will, will know that averages can, um, you know, if you rely purely on averages, then you could be missing the whole picture. We're going to show you in a demo just how you can see the distribution of your response times for your app, how it's going to open up a whole new level of insight into where your performance uh, issues are and how your customer experience is for the outliers as well as the average. Next iPads are everywhere, and there's going to be even more iPads everywhere after last Tuesday's announcements. And you want New Relic everywhere, don't you? I know that I, I care very much about our software. I want to know how well it's doing. And if it's 7 at night and um, I'm, I'm upstairs, uh, I don't have to go down to my home office to see what's going on in New Relic. I want to fire up New Relic for iPad and see exactly what's going on in my app with a gorgeous new, new UI. I will show you exactly what's going on. This is free for all New Relic customers. You're going to love using it. We're also very committed to, to uh, investing in Chrome clients as well. So if, you, if you've got an Android, or sorry, Android, uh, Android clients as well. So if, you, if you've got an Android device, you can expect New Relic Android uh, clients coming out soon as well. Next up, how many of you have ever carried a pager? Have you ever gotten a page that you didn't want to hit you? Or worse, have you ever been not notified about a problem that you wanted to be notified about? Yeah. Alerting is hard. This is, this, is, this is one of the hardest things that we do in, in monitoring software. So wake me up, but only if it's a real problem. And our new advanced alerting technology is going to achieve that for you. We've invested an awful lot in our alerting technology, um, then, and we're, we're unveiling a whole new UI that allows you to customize exactly how you want to be notified. But the hard part about doing this, the hard part of all the software we build, is making it simple and usable. right? So uh, every time you add uh, new sophisticated features to a product, think hard about how you still make it super usable. And I think we struck exactly the right balance with our alerting. Finally. What we are announcing today and will be shipping this quarter is an amazing thing for mobile. 
It's no secret that mobile is growing like a rocket ship and is rapidly overtaking desktop in terms of how people spend their time online. In fact, eBay sells 10,000 cars a week on mobile devices. 10,000 cars a week. So what you need to do in light of this trend, knowing that more and more of your business is coming from a mobile device, is you need to see in the code in the mobile device the way you can see in the code in the server with New Relic. And I am very excited, very excited to be uh, showing you shortly New Relic for mobile apps, the next release, which will be coming out this quarter. This is literally going to blow your mind. You're going to be able to go into the handset and see in a real user's handset while it's happening exactly how it's spending its time down to the thread level. Every network request is absolutely going to be mind-blowing. So with that context, I'm actually going to head straight into a demo right now. Why not get to it, huh? Okay, we can bring up the demo now. Great. So this is um, the new user interface for New Relic for Mobile. Like uh, a design goal of all of our products is to be familiar to you. So this ought to look familiar to you if you use our, any of our other products. Um, but here, there's some subtle but important differences in this, this product versus the first release, which, as I say, has been in 100 million devices to date. Um, this product now automatically determines the user interactions. So if, for example, I highly encourage you to install the, the um, FutureStack app on your phone. When you do that, there's a bunch of user interactions. There's one to sort of share your contact information. There's another user interaction. If you're on a Twitter, if you had the Twitter client, a user interaction would be something like logging in or refreshing your, uh, your tweets, uh, Twitter feed. Anyway, those interactions are automatically detected. We instrument just the right methods in your app to see what the user interaction is, knowing that what's involved with that is many uh, asynchronous activities that work in concert to generate a response time. So in the case of this, um, this, this demo app that we have uh, monitored by, by um, our, new, our new mobile monitoring product, we are going to show the, the sharing function, the, you know, looking at the gallery, looking at contacts, login, home screen. I'm going to drill in and look at the gallery user interaction. And where things get interesting is we show the aggregate amount of time spent in the user interface, how long, why is it taking so long to show this particular thing across all the devices we monitor. But then we go deep with traces. We will sample a small number of the phones that are running your software on a continual basis, getting a good broad sampling, and those samples go immensely deep. Let me show you just exactly what I'm talking about. Here's an example, a seven second trace of what happened in this phone. This is, this is from the live handset. This is kind of mind-blowing. So what we see here is here's the memory being used over the course of that seven seconds to see if there's a memory problem. We see every network request, and we correlate them all to one user interaction. So this is, this is uh, a, an interaction that does a bunch of Flickr downloads, and we can see every request. And then here we see the actual threads that are doing the work. Um, in, in mobile apps, there's one thread that does the user interface. That's what usually will, will most obviously be visible to the user in terms of uh, the performance of, of your app. And that, but behind it, there are a bunch of other threads. This is really hard to do, to somehow correlate what the other threads are doing that are causing your user interface to wait. But we are automatically doing this. There's nothing remotely like this in the market today. Um, and bringing that depth of visibility into the mobile handset, I think, is going to be a game changer. Because if, if the world's traffic is going from browser to mobile, you need, you absolutely need this. I feel like this could be one of those products that once people start using it, they can't imagine life without it. And again, our goal is to make it so that your people, who, your customers who use your mobile apps, they have a great customer experience and they keep coming back to your software. So that's the first demo, and I think, uh, I think you're going to enjoy playing with it. So keep an eye out for that. The beta is imminent, and it'll ship this quarter. I, I've got one more demo for you. And that is showing percentiles and histograms in the core app. As I mentioned before, um, this is just a new feature that's already in New Relic today because we're SaaS offering. It's just there. You don't need to install anything new. It just works. Let us show you 
what this means. Right now, I'm showing you the view that our customers are most familiar with. And, and to be clear, um, and it's a little hard to see in this pixelated screen, I'll zoom in a bit. Um, this average response time thing, um, that's still very useful because the benefit of averages is we can show the aggregate time spent so that when there's a spike, you can see what component is causing the spike. That stacked area chart tends to fall apart when you look at it with percentiles and histograms. So that's why we actually don't show a stacked area chart when we go to percentiles. We show a multi-line chart. But this chart now will show you the blue line at the bottom is, um, is median response time, and then we've got average slightly above it and 95th percentile response time. And if you feel like the pain, you can even look at what your 99th percentile response time is and, and feel the pain that your customers on the outliers are feeling. Um, so anyway, this is all just automatic. It just comes in. And for those of you who are really focused on delivering a great level of service for all your customers, I feel like you're probably going to be looking at this chart even more often than you look at the averages. But the other way to think about it is how are my response times distributed? And we can do this view across any number of transaction types or, um, um, or, or your services um, and, and, or the application as a whole for browser or, or app server. And, and this histogram shows, you know, basically in our case, we've got a, a, a spike kind of on the low end and then another, another spike in the medium area. And what's cool is we can actually select a specific node and say, what's going on here? Why, what's, why is there a disproportionate number? And on the right side, we will see which controller actions um, are, are taking up um, all of that, are, are participating in that part of your distribution. Contrast that with over here, your outliers, where you've got, we've got more than five second response time over here. These are the transactions that, that are making our, our, our most popular in that segment of response time. So it's a whole new way to slice and dice your performance data. Our customers have been asking us for this kind of uh, depth of visibility for a long time, and we're delighted to include it for every level of New Relic service as of today. So that's my demo for that. Great. OK, we can go back to the slides. Thank you. So um, while I'm thrilled to be demoing what is going on today and shipping today, um, and, and it, let, to remind you what we've announced that, that's all available today or in this quarter, we've got node support, just showed you histograms, iPad, great alerting, and the mobile product. That's all available today. but. You know, we're always thinking about the future at New Relic. And we literally are just getting started here. You know, part of my job as CEO is to think deeply on where New Relic is heading next. And so often when I demo like what we're shipping today, I have to rewind to back to where my head was at with a few people in the company, you know, six, eight months ago. Um, but now I'm going to give you a peek into where my head is at right now, and it's a peek into the future of what we'll be shipping next year that I just couldn't wait to share with you because I, I, it's been something I've been passionate about. I've been thinking deeply, as I say, on where New Relic ought to go, and there's been a couple of facts that have been rattled around my head for the last couple of years that I think ought to be fundamental to our product and business strategy. The first fact is this. If software is eating the world, and I believe that is the case, then the app or your software is at the center of the business. If every business is, to, a, to some extent, a software business, then data from your application about what your application is doing, what your customers are doing with your software, is the data that is the best data to analyze to make your business better. And that goes far beyond response time data. That goes into all sorts of things that, that we happen to be able to see today. And the fact number two, which is clear to me and I think clear to mo pretty much everyone in this room, is that every business wants to be more data-driven. You know, far too many decisions are made by either speculation or loudest voice in the room or gut feel, largely because it's too hard to get the data to really make informed decisions. And, and, you know, backing up on an idea w with data, sometimes it's choose too much effort. But e it's, it's the most common question is, uh, can you back up that, that, that idea with data? We want to be able to say yes more often. So with those facts in my mind, let me take you back to December of last year. Um, you know, uh, as a builder of software, and, and this is also true in many creative efforts, 
you can work and work and work on a problem and you know, it's like the author, like you crumple up the piece of paper and throw it in the dustbin and start it again. Yeah, I, I went through that throughout most of 2012, rattling these ideas in my mind. Um, and then I was in Lake Tahoe and I thought I was going to take a break from thinking about this, th these problems and where New Relic would go next. And, and this was uh, in a part of Lake Tahoe where my home is uh, up there called, uh, in an area called uh, Mount Rubicon. And, and in late December, um, you can see I started to write some code. This is my GitHub commit history. And uh, in particular, right on that date, inspiration struck. And I got to give a shout out to my dear wife because um, she knows when, when I get hit by that idea. How many of you have been hit by an idea and you can't stop thinking about it and all you want to do is work on it? Huh? Isn't that like the best feeling in the world? It's so amazing. I, I, I'm so blessed that I get that. And, and uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit of, um, it's almost like a drug. I mean, you, you, once you have it, you want, you can't think of anything else but that. So bless my wife. She understood I was in that zone, and she took my daughter, and they went back to our house back in the Bay Area. And I coded from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. through the first two weeks of January. And it was awesome. It was just magical. Thank goodness we've got a remarkably good team leading the company, New Relic. So, uh, um, you know, Chris Cook and the team are minding the shop while I'm building what, what I can't wait to demo for you in a few minutes. So what has come out of that early work, and it's obviously far more than myself now, we've got a team of engineers working on it, is what I'd like to think of as the second act for New Relic. New Relic is and always will be the leader in APM. We will always be there to help you make your software faster, more reliable, better for your customers, so you can deliver great customer experiences. But we're excited to add a new project that we've codenamed Rubicon, based on where the idea came for me. And it's coming to you in 2014. And let me tell you a little bit about the problems New Relic is, is going to solve. We want you to be agile with your data-driven decision-making. What do I mean by that? Well, I feel like and we have this at, at, at New Relic, we've had this experience where in trying to become more data-driven as a company as we grow our business. It feels kind of like waterfall software development to me in that um, you've got to think very hard about the question you pose because it may take weeks before you get the data in and in a format and queried and get an answer back. And that's kind of like uh, waterfall software development where you spend all this time specking software, then you build it, then you ship it, and it's been eight months since you like, really made the decisions of what you're going to build, and you find out too late that you asked the wrong questions or made the wrong specifications. What I love about agile software development is you get instant feedback on the work you're doing. The tighter the iteration, the better your software, and that ought to be the same with your data-driven decision-making. You ought to be able to ask an app, a, a question of your app and get an immediate answer. Immediate answer. And once you do that, it changes your whole thinking. You get creative with your problem solving. Every time you ask a question, you get an immediate answer. It prompts the next question until you get to an insight. And that insight changes your business, helps you sell more product, helps you convert more customers, helps you reach new markets, helps you delight more people. What kinds of questions come up? They go far beyond just how fast is my app? You know, what's my average revenue per sale? Or how are we doing in this country? Or are people converting better since we changed the color of this button? All these questions come in, and in fact, it's a fire hose of questions. These questions come in at a rate far faster than any company is able to answer them. You may get 1,000 questions a day, and you're lucky if your team can come up with 10 answers to the 1,000 questions. So we believe that the future is about something that we call software analytics. And what I mean by that is ask a question of your software and get a direct answer from your software. Looking at the real events that are flowing through your transaction immediately, up to the second, with very fast response times. And, and I, I just think this is going to be in a very exciting time for our industry when all of a sudden you've got complete visibility into the, and answers into the questions that are essential for you to make even better software that will turn into more successful businesses. So I'm about to go into a demo, but before I do, I'd like to just kind of tell you a little bit about how we're built, how, what, what, what our architecture is. This is New Relic's you know, simplified architecture today. 
At the bottom, you see that um, we collect data from uh, code running on the server. We collect data from uh, code running in the browser and, and on the mobile device, obviously. And we introduce this platform, and that lets you send more data from things outside of the application, like your Mongo database performance or something. That all comes into a massive data storage system that we, sit, we persist those 200 billion metrics a day, and then we pre-aggregate them in anticipation of what is going to be demonstrated or d displayed on our screens. When I show you that chart of average response time, um, we pre-aggregate it across all the transactions we observed into, into those on a per-minute basis so that you can get fast, uh, fast uh, answers to those questions. The problem is when you pre-aggregate, you throw away all the raw event data. Oh, and by the way, all this is hosted in the cloud, and, and so that is super simple to get going. You don't have to think about anything. Just drop in our agent, and you get this visibility. And that's one of the things that makes New Relic, I think, pretty magical. Um, but we need to actually keep the raw event data to answer ad hoc questions. And what makes it even harder is we can't even index on insert because we don't know what your questions are going to be. And you'd pro you probably don't know what questions are going to be. So we need a massive cloud-hosted database that will persist, for example, every one of those 15 billion page views that we collect every, every week, as well as all those app server transactions, all those mobile transactions, turn them into a bunch of time-stamped key value events, and then somehow deliver lightning-fast queries on those events in aggregate the second you think of them and type them. And that's what Rubicon does. So I am very excited to go to this demo. Let's uh, see if it works. It's under development. But I am optimistic. So OK, we are ready for the demo. Great. So uh, this will be available in the market next year. We're going to start taking. Um, Beta signups uh, later this quarter. The sooner you sign up, the better your chance to get in. I encourage you to go to rubicon.newrelic.com to sign up for interest in the beta. But let me get started by just running a simple query on all of these events that we're collecting. I'm going to run queries on New Relic's own data about our customers. And uh, forgive the resolution on these screens. I'm going to just zoom this up a bit so it's a little easier to read. So. One of the things we decided to do in building Rubicon was use a simple query language that was familiar. Um, if, you, if, you, if you know SQL, this will feel very comfortable for you. But it's, not, it's a custom query language that is designed for operating on billions of events where every query operates on a time period, a time window. So I'm going to just do for a very simple query to start, just to give you a sense of what's the basics. I'm going to just count the number of page view events that we've collected. And this is where we differ a bit from. Um, from SQL, I'm going to do since seven days ago. Let's look in the last week and say, how many page views happened on my app? Now, I don't know if you noticed. We, we just whipped through 13, 14 million events very, very quickly. I'll just kind of scroll on down and show. That was 130 milliseconds to look at all those events and count them. But you know, counting lots of events, that's not, nothing particularly unique or special. But when you get answers this quickly, you can modify your question in real time. So why don't I do that? Why don't I say, I don't want to count the events. I actually want to count the unique number of unique user attributes. So how many users logged into my site in the last seven days? 47,000. So blam, you know, you're, you're blasting through millions of events. You're getting instant answers. And when you get instant answers, the next question just comes to you. You don't have to, you know, if, if I had to wait a few days to get that answer, or a few hours even, I've lost my train of thought. But I'm still in this train of thought. So my next question is, well, how do they break out? How do those users break out? So I'm just going to put a facet on them. So let's say I'm going to notice that we have autocomplete to make all this a lot, a lot easier. So I'm going to facet on, why don't I start with operating system, the user agent OS. OK, that's how our users break out by operating system. Because we don't do any indexing, we're whipping through all these events in a massively powerful, uh, massively uh, parallel cluster. Um, we, we, you don't have to, in advance, index on any attribute. This will just happen no matter what I facet on. So I'll, I'll facet on country code. Just say, all right, how many people are using our app by country? OK, there's our breakout by country, right? This is just, and we automatically visualize it for you, which is really cool. Um, by the way, for those of you, which is pretty much everyone in the audience except for my mom, 
you also get the raw JSON. So if you just want to invoke this as a service and blast it into your own software, you're good to go. We're collecting this data for you already, by the way. We've been collecting it since June. You don't have to set anything up. Just log in, start writing some queries. I think you're going to be blown away. So um, let's just fast it by something that's important to our business, our product. So how, many, how do these people break out by product? So that's the seven-day usage of our customers by product. And, and we've got a variety of product levels, depending on whether you're a light customer on the free product. or Let's look at Pro Trial. Pro Trial basically correlates to all those people that have got t-shirts. Where APM product equals Pro Trial. And what if my marketing genius Patrick said, and I want to see the, how it's going outside of the US. So, and country code does not equal US. Oops. So we got 3,400 people on pro trials outside of the US. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with clay here. I'm not playing with steel where, you know, you've got to design it all up front and then you better have gotten it right. I've, I've got clay, I can mold it. So I'm going to mold it and I'm going to say, well, the obvious question I ask myself next is what's the, what's the trend of that? So I'll just put a time series on it. And let's look at it by hour for fun. And there's our hourly usage of non-US pro trial users all on a database in the cloud. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but let's say somebody who doesn't want to write NRQL or learn NRQL wants to see this data. Well, it's simple. You just add it to dashboards. I can add anything I've just done. Once I've gotten it right, I want to share it. You're going to share this. Let me bring this back to full screen. Um, so our dashboards are simply collections of queries visualized the right way. For example, one of the things when I showed you that, um, that breakout by product, that's kind of similar to this query here. You can visualize them in different ways. Here's a pie chart of how many people are on our site right now. And if you notice, um, these, these things are going to update automatically if they're, if they're real-time queries. So for example, oh, let me show you my real-time, uh, my paid monthly active users. These are the monthly active users that are not on light, not on a pro trial. And uh, here, I'm not going to zoom in here because uh, these are company names, but these are the names of the companies that are on pro trial that have used our product in the, na in the last seven days, the most. So I can predict which of which our next customers are going to be looking at the data coming in my software. That's where I mean like the data coming in your software is transformative to your business. The answers are there. You just need to be able to query the data correctly and do it fast. And you'd like to, to be able to do it without installing a bunch of software and hardware to do it. That's what Rubicon's going to deliver. So I often look at my real-time dashboard to sort of say what's going on right now in the site. And so for example, we've got 3,000 people on the site right now, 246 pro trial users. And we're smart enough that if the query is something recent, like the last couple of minutes, then it's likely to change more often. So let's refresh the number. So we're just, you know, you just sort of type a query like what's going on right now and blam, it'll visualize your chart. So th this could be your dashboard for your marketing department. It could be your dashboard for your product management department. In fact, let's look at a product management use case. I mentioned that histograms and percentiles are available today. The first thing that anybody who builds a new feature wants to know is, are people using it? So let's see what's going on with histograms and percentiles. 84 people are using that feature right now. 84 people right now. And if I, uh, I can zoom in and show how those users break out. Over the last 24 hours, I, I, you know, I fibbed a bit. We actually uh, launched this yesterday so that we, everything would be stable and I wouldn't be wondering whether it was going to work. So, um, Histograms and percentiles have been live for, for about a day, and over the course of that day, we see 4,500 people um, have used the product broken out by, or used use this feature broken out by their subscription level. So this dashboard took literally five minutes to construct. There was no new instrumentation required. It was just, let's just query the event data in a different way to solve a different business case. And I feel like there's just going to be this immense opportunity to do, solve all sorts of problems that you know, we haven't even imagined yet based on just being able to query your application in real time and get answers. I mean, you can, get the in, you can get the names of the users that were on your site when you had a production issue, and you can filter them by how much they spend, so you can send an email saying, 
you were on our site before we had a production issue, and I'd like to you know, give you um, some kind of um, tchotchke to for, thank you for your patience. I mean, like, the, amount, the number of problems you're gonna be able to solve with Rubicon is just kind of mind-blowing. And it'll integrate directly with, with any other software. If you can invoke HTTP and get JSON back, you've got the answer to these queries in real time. So have an eye out for Rubicon. I, I, I hope you share my excitement for it. I think it's gonna be a game changer. Okay, we can go back to the slides, please. Thank you. So I'd like to, um, to wrap up uh, my presentation, and, but just sort of bring us back to what motivates, I think, all of us, certainly motivates the people that are at New Relic, is we all want to make a difference. We all want to you know, know that when we come to work in the morning or what we do with our families on the weekends, it makes a difference. And as I say, I, f I personally feel very lucky to be a software professional because the stuff that... We, we build are used by people to make their lives better. And so in a way, we all have a chance to put a dent in the universe. And New Relic really wants to be your partner in making your software successful. And we're, we're just so proud and honored to, to have a relationship with you that we can, we can play a role in that. So um, I want to thank you all for coming. I think this is going to be just a wonderful couple of days. I'm very excited about, um, about cake tonight and about, about our about our, uh, our, they're going to be amazing. We're going to have a great set of speakers, as I mentioned. Um, but before I leave the stage, I, I did want to bring up a dear friend of mine. Um, this guy needs no, no introduction. O Malik is one of the greatest journalists, tech journalists in the history of tech journalism. And the fact that Owen would spend some time with us to, to just talk a bit about where New Relic is at is a real, real pleasure and honor. So Owen, come on up and thank you. How are you? you were joking about that stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think these people didn't get how big a change you just announced. It's, uh, it's a different company next year altogether. Well, the thing about um, most technology companies is um, in the history of technology companies, there's maybe five or ten that managed to create a second act, a brand new product line that broke them out of their first product line. And I felt it was very important for New Relic to focus early on trying to be one of those companies. We're still doubling our core APM business this year. It'll continue to grow very rapidly. And so it's not like we're desperate for a new product to sustain growth, but that's no reason not to start innovating now. And so that was the, 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 the mindset behind us. We're never done building new products. And, and, and I think it does change the complexion of our company. We want to build something of lasting impact. And I think Rubicon is an important step in that direction. So what do you think about the evolution of new relic? What, what, what kind of company do you, when you talk about software analytics, it, it sounds nice and dandy <laughs> on the slide. But what does it change the company to? What do you become? What does new relic become in the future? We have an opportunity, and we've got a lot to do, do a lot of things right. But I think of it this way. Um, essentially, Oracle became the second largest software company in the world, largely on the backs of being the database of record for software, mm -hmm. for most software, enterprise software. Up until very recently, if you had an enterprise app, the database of choice was unquestionably Oracle. And our vision is that there's a second database, not underneath the app or behind the app. There's a database to the side of the app, which is about the app. I call it the meta-database. And we'd like to have the kind of leadership position for metadata about the app that Oracle has had in, in the data behind the app. And we think that could create a top 10 enterprise software company that makes a difference for people who build software. So what you're saying is that as we move into this new future where data is the driving force of businesses, people, how we live and do things, the important stuff is not the database, it's what you do with the data and the things you can do with the data. And the database becomes almost like, a, like an afterthought. Yeah, well, it, hopefully, yeah, if we build our software right, it gets out of the way. Right now, you have to think far too hard about, if you want to back up a, an idea or a decision with data, it's 
it's stressful because you gotta install a bunch of software, you gotta maintain a bunch of software, then you gotta wait hours or weeks for answers. So um, I don't wanna have to think about all the technology that's involved in me making a call for my cell phone. I just wanna make the call. And similarly, I don't want to think about all the technology involved in asking myself whether pro trial users are growing outside of the U.S. I just want the answer, and we want to do it like that. Right. You know, one of the things you and I often talk about is the importance of data, but we also need people who can ask the question from that data, right? Yes. So that seems to be the big challenge of our time is we don't have enough people who understand what questions to ask this data. So how does your new direction help with that? Well, I think the people are out there, but it's a very small subset of those people who know what question to ask and have a sense of how to implement MapReduce jobs or what, what, what key values ought to be present and what the file format ought to be for storing the raw data. That suddenly narrows the scope of people that can ask the right questions. So if you democratize the technology that enables people to ask questions and you get instant answers so that, like I say, your train of thought Mm -hmm. is real time rather than go get a coffee to get your answer, I think you're going to find that everybody to some extent could become a data scientist. Do you think that as companies need to re-educate their, their people? Like, you know, when you introduce this, how do you think your customers have to think differently with the launch of this product? Well, I hope that um, the products we build don't force our customers to think very differently at all. They do what's natural to them. Our customers want to build awesome software. They don't want to wrestle with tools. They don't want to wrestle with installing tools, especially. So um, if we do our job right, um, we just, our technology is out of the way, and, and they don't have much, or if anything, to learn at all. I mean, it, that's why we picked a query language that looks an awful lot like SQL. It's like, I don't want people to have to learn something totally new and arcane. Um, so that's a design goal of ours. All right. Well, let me ask you, just as, as the CEO, Really, you got away with two weeks of coding by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I and am the. Things uh, didn't fall apart at, back <laughs> in the office. I am the luckiest, uh, luckiest guy in the world. You know, I'll take you back to. Um, I was on vacation in 2010, maybe 2009, thinking to myself. New Relic was 20 people, and I loved everything about my job. I loved that I still was connected to the developers. We were building software. Iterations were fast and that um, product was you know, a key part of what I did. But having been at my last company, Wiley, had nearly 300 employees when it was acquired and I saw how that company grew, I knew that unless I thought very hard about um, my role within the company as it grew, I was gonna get sucked into an endless number of meetings and be involved in very important decisions that need to be involved, like what should our vacation policy be for um, people that just had a baby, uh, or um, you know, how many, um, how many people should we use to staff the future stack conference and whether that should be outsourced or not? And all those kinds of questions, they just explode as, you, as your company grows. And um, I kn so I knew very early on I needed to bring on an amazing team of operating execs that in many ways took on parts of the quote CEO job um, so that I could focus on what I love to do and where I can add the most value, which is building software that hopefully delights our customers, doing it with a team and setting strategic direction for the company. So I'm very blessed to have an amazing team that I get to spend my Mondays with, and every oh, I look forward to my Mondays because I get to spend them with these people. And, uh, and that's, that's a special part of what I think is great about New Relic. So will Rubicon let you get more days next year to program? My next, uh, my next week to go, go dark is uh, December 1st. I try to do it at least twice a quarter. And um, the poor developers work on the team. All of a sudden, chatter goes way through the roof. It's like, I, it's like don't call me, but I'll call you. And so uh, I, I, I pester developers if I need help on anything. And, uh, and that, that, that volume goes up when I go, when I go off the grid. Well, I, I was actually joking about where you're going to be next year. But if you're a data-informed company like the way you ex expect Rubicon to be, where does it help you know, New Relic go, as you have so much data about yourself now? Does it help you make better decisions? Does it help oh, you yeah. go faster? We had a customer come to us um, two weeks ago. Or no, my VP of sales came to me two weeks ago and said, we have a customer that wants to understand how much they've been using our software. And that customer is actually a large company that has deployed New Relic on many accounts. OK, so, so that was not an easy answer to get. So we went to one of our developers on our business enablement engineering team, very busy person, very deep backlog, and said, hey, could you tell me how many people from this company used our product in the last uh, 90 days? 
and he's like, oh, man, that'll take me two or three days to do. I got to write a bunch of code and scripts to, to get that. And, you know, probably have to get it off the production database. It might slow things down. There's all this, like, you know, he wasn't excited about doing it, and it was going to take a while. I got wind of it and gave him the answer instantly. And then he came to my office, and we started iterating on it. So, oh, can you see how that breaks out? What's the time history of it? Who are the people that use the most? It was that iterate. So it's totally changing our business, and we better understand how our customers are using our product because of this. Um, and that helps us build better products. So you're going to grow much faster next year because of this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Put yeah. that in the S1. Yeah. I, I was just making, making your job easier, letting, Thank your, you. letting your sales team know that they have Absolutely. to work Giga twice Holmes, as longer next, next year. Next post, new relic to do 5,000% growth in Q1. That's right. <laughs> Please, that is off the record. Nobody's listening right now, are they? Like there's no reporters <laughs> okay, in the room at great. all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, when you, when you really do think, I mean, that was the question I was going to yeah. ask you. You know, new relic is being viewed as the next big, you know, Silicon Valley software company, you know, you're leading the analytics and the, you know, the monitoring and all the, the new way of thinking charge. How do you feel about that? Does it put an ad additional pressure on you when, like, everybody thinks that you're like the next big enterprise company? <laughs> We've got a long way to go um, as a company, but we feel like what's special about this point in time is, for me as a builder of products is, I really believe the best products are likely to win in the marketplace. That wasn't the case in the late 90s. It was, you know, the best people who had the best steak dinners that, uh, you know, took, took the CIO to the right places, um, or the wrong places, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I'm serious about that. Um, and, you know, that's not, that, you know, and so people are saddled with crappy software. So it's, uh, it's incumbent upon us, and, you know, we've got a World-class partner, Jim Gochi, who leads the product org and tells me when I'm pushing too hard or I've got stupid ideas. And, but Jim and I and the engineers at New Relic, we know that building software is hard and we've got to keep the pedal in the metal in innovation. Yeah. Um, and the second we take anything for granted, um, that's, that's the second we could become the next, you know, BlackBerry. Yeah. Right? And we just don't want that to happen. Right? It can happen overnight. Yeah. Well, before we go, last question for you. You know, data is a, is, is a beautiful weapon, but it also can cause some problems. Mm. It creates, it tries to quantify people hmm. where they've never been quantified before. We've yeah. been, you know, the gut instinct and human emotion and reaction are there for a reason. So do you feel like there, there needs to be a data sensitivity training in companies in the future? <laughs> data sensitivity training. I hadn't thought of that before. I can tell you that there is absolutely a role for art and science in making good business decisions. Um, you know, I looked at all the facts and did a bunch of data analysis when I decided to start building Rubicon. At the end of the day, it was my gut that says this was the right thing to do. You back up your instincts with data, but, but at the same time, only intuition can solve certain kinds of problems. And the most important thing intuition is for is in figuring out who you want to spend your work time with. You know, the resume is a valuable tool, but it is nothing compared to the character of the person you work with. And you do a gut check on, could I imagine myself going in a carpool to this person with LA? If the answer is no, I'd go nuts. Don't hire them no matter how strong they are. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of the kind of decision that data will not help you with. And it's the kind of decisions we use in making New Relic a better company. Great. Well, I'm really happy to see you succeed. You know, Lou has been a good friend. Every time I've found myself looking for answers, Lou has time to answer my phone call. And I'm delighted to see you and your company grow where it is. And hopefully you will continue on this path to, you know, greatness. And thank you for this amazing opportunity to come, to have me come and talk to you. Thank you, Om. Take it's care. a real honor. Thank you. Take care. Thank you all. Thank you.